Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Okay, so how are we today? Uh, well, okay. okay. Hopefully we are okay. Yeah, thanks, sir. <clears throat> yes. Okay, so let us, uh, get, let us get started. Huh? So today we are, we are uh, starting our second uh, uh, lecture slide, the second lecture slide. Uh, and then in this uh, lecture slide, basically we basically we just want to look at electric the, the concept of the concept of electric field. We are going to look at uh, the concept of electric field. Just a recap of uh, what we did. Maybe if I can just ask uh, if we have people who had you know the, the problems arising from the previous class. Any problems arising from the pre previous class? Okay, so it seems there is no uh, problem. So we are going to start looking at the concept of electric field. Just a recap of what we did. I think we, uh, in the previous uh, lectures that we have had, we, uh, we talked about a Coulomb force. We talked about a Coulomb force. And then just to remind ourselves, uh, what we did is that if you have a charge here, let us call it uh, charge one. And you have another charge here, let us call it charge two. And then uh, we ask if we say that the distance between the, the two charges, the distance between the two charges is R, then according to Coulomb's law, then there will always be a force. Okay, there will be a force uh, that is acting on uh, each of these charges. So for instance, there will be a charge on this uh, force two in this direction. I'm assuming that the two charges are positively charged or have the same charge. So on Q2, you have a force that is on that direction. Of course, that force will be coming from uh, charge one. And for, uh, on charge one itself, there'll be a force in this direction. And then that, that force uh, will actually be coming from charge two. And then according to what we had uh, learned, according to what we had learned, we said that this force, the magnitude of this force, so the, the force on charge one due to charge two, must be the same as the, the magnitude of the force uh, from uh, on charge two due to charge one. And then it is just equal to a constant of proportionality uh, whose value is uh, given in the books. And then uh, the magnitude of charge one, the magnitude of charge two, and then over R squared, which is the separation distance. So this is basically what is called Coulomb Z. This is basically what is called Coulomb Z uh, law. All right, so now, um, now let us uh, look at this. Um, so what I've just written on the previous slide is something like this. If you have this, um, as you, uh, this thing that you, you can see here, this thing is a, is a charge, it's a positive charge. So uh, if you have a positive charge and you have another positive charge, this one that has just uh, come in, all right, so according to Coulomb's uh, law, what we, what we had discussed is that uh, this charge here will be experiencing a force. This force, we call it a, a Coulomb force. All right, now, um, so this force is exerting, is, um, is having a force applied on it, which we call the Coulomb's force. Now, as you can see, these two, these two forces, these two charges are not in contact. The two charges are not in contact. Okay, so now what exactly is happening there? You know, we have a situation whereby someone is pushing another person, but without touching them. You get the point. We have uh, a situation where there is a force that is exerted on the object, but without, um, without coming into physical contact with that uh, object. So that uh, phenomenon where you have a force acting on another on an object uh, from another object without physical contact is what is called action action at a distance so coulomb's force is an example of what we call in physics as the action at a distance all right now how can how do we explain action at a distance how do we explain action at, at a distance all right so um this action, let us just consider first this, this uh, force. 
I mean, let us consider this charge. This charge, just this charge alone, okay? So um, in order for us to understand what is happening where uh, a force is exerted on another object without physical contact, we can explain that in terms of oh, an electric field. So in short, we are saying that if you have any charge, be it positive or negative, there is always, there is always an electric field at, at all points in the vicinity of that uh, charge. There is always an electric field at all points in the vicinity of that electric field. So you can see there's an electric field everywhere. Okay, so if you bring in another charge, it means that uh, due to that electric field, the force, the force that is acting on it is actually as a result of that electric field. Okay, so that is the, actually what is called, so the force, the kind of force that is acting, applied is what is called a field D force. So this is a force that is due to a certain field, what, what we call a force field. So um, I repeat what I just uh, said. Okay, so uh, whenever you have an, um, a, a charged object, whenever you have a charged object, such as this one here, everywhere around, everywhere around this charged object, there is a quantity, it's not an imaginary quantity, it's actually a physical quantity that we call the electric field, all right? And it, um, whether there is a positive charge such as this one, whether there is another charge in the vicinity of this charge, that uh, uh, electric field is always there, okay? And it is because of that electric field that when you bring another charge, within the vicinity of the charge, the uh, Coulomb force is able to be exerted, okay? So it is because of that field. So th that kind of a force is called a force field, okay? So where it, is it? It is in the space surrounding. It is defined at all points in the region surrounding this uh, charge. Okay, so uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, this we are trying to say, you see, uh, wh wherever there is, um, according to our um, uh, convention here, where they, if you have a, a red line, it means that it is just the electric field. So you see that the electric field is present even when there is no charge, the electric field is present. Okay, so now if, uh, if uh, the electric, if you bring in a charge within the electric field of this uh, uh, charge of interest, then it is because of this field that it, a force that has been shown in the blue will be applied. All right. Okay. So, um, any any questions before we leave this uh, slide? Are we together? Are we together, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, uh, we're together. Thank you. Okay. So now, um, uh, this point, I think we have already. We have already explained at length to say that the electric field exists in the region of space around a charged object. Okay, so in short, we say that the source of the electric field is a charge. So there can never be an electric field if there is no charge. Actually, as we go, we are going to find that a positive charge is a source of the electric field. It means that that is where the electric field lines are emanating from. And a negative charge is what is called the sink. The negative charge is the, the sink where the electric fields are terminating or they are ending. All right, so now um, what is the relationship? We saw in the previous slide that when, there is, when you bring an elect, a, a charged object within the electric field, then there will be a force that will be applied on that charged object. Okay, so in order for us to define, to find a connection between the electric field and the Coulomb force, there is need for us to introduce the, the concept of a test charge, the concept of a test charge. So what is the, a test charge? So by definition, a test charge is simply a small uh, positively charged, it, it is a small positive charge. A test charge is a small positive charge. 
Okay, now uh, this, uh, since the charge is very, very small, it means that it will not exert forces on other, it will not exert significant forces on other uh, charges within its vicinity. Okay, so in short, it does not affect the charge distribution within its vicinity. Okay, so uh, a, 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 that's a test charge. A test charge is a small and positive charge that does not affect the charge distribution within its neighborhood. Now, um, now I think I, I want to explain something. So we say that if you have uh, um, this, this thing here is the, this thing here is the uh, charged object. The charged object is the source of the electric field. The source of the electric field. So you can see that there's electric field everywhere around. Now, um, if you bring in a test charge, this uh, small thing here, it is a test charge. So if you bring in a test charge within the electric field of this uh, object here, then what will happen? Um, what will happen is that there will be a force that will be uh, acted. There will be a force that will be applied on this test charge according to Coulomb's law. Okay. So by definition, the electric field is simply the force per unit test charge. If the test charge, we say it is Q0, then the electric field is just the force that is acting on a test charge that is placed in a certain region of space. The electric field is just the Coulomb force acting on a test charge. Remember, a test charge is, a small, is simply a small uh, positive charge that does not affect the charge distribution within its neighborhood. So the uh, electric field by definition is just the force that is acting on the test charge when placed at that particular point. The electric field is the, simply the Coulomb force. The electric field at a given point is the Coulomb force that could act on a test charge if the test charge was given and was placed at that particular point. Okay. Um, now, you see, I have used a very uh, important term there. I said that uh, the uh, electric field is uh, the force that would, that would, that, okay, the electric field is the force that would be exerted on a test charge on a uh, test charge. Now, it doesn't mean that in order for the electric field to be defined, there must always be a test charge, no? Okay, that's why we are using the word the hood, that hood. The, it, it means that the electric field is there even in the absence of the test charge, but then by definition, the electric field is just basically the Coulomb force that would act on the test charge if it were placed at that particular point. So that's why that's uh, the, this point that I'm trying to explain to say that the presence of the test charge is not necessary for the electric field to exist. The presence of the test charge is not necessary for the electric field to exist. Okay, so you see, but if you place the, the, the test charge at that particular point, then you find that there force acts on it. Okay, so at any given point, if you were to place a test charge, you have a force acting on that uh, a test charge, and that force is the electric field at that particular point. At any given point, the force acting on the test charge placed at that point is the electric field at that particular point. Okay, so I think uh, I have a question. And as usual, I think I, I want to see how, I don't or just want one person to answer. I want to see how you guys are going to answer this question. So I'm going to send it in your group within three minutes. Um, so let me send it in your group so that I see how each one of you guys have understood that particular concept. Okay, so just uh, hold on, wait for it. Just wait for it. Mm 
Okay, so I'll be sending very, very soon. Okay, just uh, hold on. Okay, so there you go. Let us give ourselves um let us give ourselves uh, three minutes. Three minutes. And so this is uh um fifteen thirty eight, so forty one. I'll check to see how you guys are doing. Okay, so um, I think we are uh, time up. I, our time has finished. Uh, if you haven't answered it yet, you, you can take your time. And um, I think you can now do it in your spare time. Uh, we have uh, 16 students who have uh, done the, who have attempted the question so far. From these 16, I think 11 students have uh, got it right. And then five students have uh, got it uh, wrong. Um, I think um, it could be Mr. Mucheka. Go, um, did it in the in the uh, was actually the fastest fast, fastest did it within 17 seconds okay so now um let us try to uh, do the let us try to do the question together let us do the the question the, that activity together and then we see how it was supposed to be uh, answered let us do the activity together so that we see how it was supposed to be uh, answered. Uh, the, uh, uh, so in most of these uh, questions, you find that there's just a, a certain concept that the question is trying to, to assess. Okay, so uh, here we are saying that a test charge, um, a test charge of positive three microcoulombs is at a point P 
where an external electric field is directed to the right and has a magnitude of what has been given there. If the test charge is replaced with another test charge of minus three, what happens to the external electric field at point P? Okay, so the concept that is supposed to be applied in this uh, question is, that, is what we had said to say that the electric field exists whether you have a test charge or not. The existence of the test charge at any given point does not affect the electric field. Okay, so um, it, uh, the correct answer here is that um, then uh, um, the electric field will not be affected in any, in any way. Okay, the electric field will not be affected in any, any way. Any, any questions? Any questions? Okay, so uh, we go back to our, go back to our, the, the question never showed up on, the link never showed up. Pardon? The link uh, never showed up on my internet. Oh, maybe it could, it could be, um, the, the link never showed up on your what? Telegram. I, I, I don't know what could be the reason for that, but I've, I've posted in the, you, are you part of our uh, course group? The physics uh, 231 group? Yes, but I, I just joined today. Yes, so it should show there because everyone who has attempted got the link from there. I, I think that's what we usually do. We post uh, these questions on that, that forum. Oh, okay, so oh. just try to check it out from there. Okay, so well, so we now continue with our uh, uh, arrangement. We continue with our issue of the electric field. So we've said that uh, the formula, this formula is very important. You, you see that the electric field, in order for us to calculate the electric field, we must um, know the Coulomb force. If you want, you can calculate the Coulomb force using, um, using Coulomb's law. All right, so the Coulomb force over the test, the test charge. Now, what about the direction? Very important point here. The direction of the electric field is that of the force that acts on a positive charge. Okay, so uh, if you want to find the direction of the electric field, because the electric field is a vector, so it has magnitude and direction. Um, so the, the direction is the, uh, the, the direction of the electric field. You imagine that you have placed a test charge at that particular point, and then you ask yourself, in what direction is this? Is the test charge going to going in this um, with, when I place it within the electric field? Okay. So the direction of the test charge of the positive test charge is what is the, uh, what determines it direction of the electric field. Maybe I, I try to, I try to, to illustrate by, a, by an example. So if I have a positive, if I have a positive um, charge so, here, a positive charge here, yeah. of course I know that there, there will be an electric field at all points around this charge. Okay, so now the question is that what is the direction of this field? What is the direction of this field? So I imagine that I have put a positive test charge at this point. Then in what direction is it going? Is it going to be attracted or repelled? So since, so since this charge is positive, then, and then the test charge is also always positive. So this test charge is actually going to be repelled. It's going to be repelled. So, that direction that I've just indicated there is actually the direction of the electric field, okay? That direction is the direction of the electric field. So in short, you can say that the electric field for a point, for a positive charge, for a positive point charge, the electric field is directed outwards. Why? Because if you place a, po a, 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 te a positive te a test charge, it will be repelled, meaning that it will be pushed outwards. So for a, um, for, for a positive charge, for a positive charge, the direction of the electric field is always in outwards. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, and, and of course, um, from this formula that you can see, um, the, units, the units of um, 
electric fields are just newtons per coulomb because the force is measured in, in uh, newtons, charge is measured in coulombs. And then in this diagram, in this uh, table here, you can see it's just uh, something to give us an idea about the range of the electric field in different, um, in different situations. So for instance, inside a copper wire of a household circuit, you have this uh, electric field, the value of the electric field approximately is that. Uh, near a charged comb, if you, if you charge a comb uh, electrostatically, maybe you, by brushing it against your hair, there is um, the, the, the electric field around it produced would be in the order of 10 to the power three and so on and so forth. So this table is just there to give us an idea about the, the electric field for different eh, situations. Okay, so I have another interactive uh, question. Um, I think, um, okay, this one, maybe we'll just answer it. I think I'll just ask someone to answer it so that we don't uh, spend too much time. Okay, so uh, we say that uh, which diagram could be considered to show the electric force? Okay, so uh, Madam Mwaba, please, I can see your, your hand raised. So which, which one here do you think is our answer? B. Uh, B. Okay, so B, uh, why have you opted for B? Can you explain your answer? You say that uh, for a positive charge, the direction of the electric field is always pointed outward. The direction of the electric field is they always pointed outward. Okay, any other, any other um, opinion? What do others think? Huh? Okay, so um, uh, um, uh, let us read the question very carefully. The question is saying that which diagram could be considered which diagram could be considered? Okay, just, just one moment. Um, okay, which diagram would be considered to show the correct electric force on a positive test charge? Okay, on a positive test charge. So we are talking about the force, not due to a positive charge, but on a positive test charge. So I, I think the key word here that I'm, I'm looking at is on, on a positive ch uh, test charge due to a point charge. Okay, um, um, uh, Mr. Kafwembe. The answer is A. The answer is A. Why do you say A? Hello? Yes, yes. Uh, why, why, why do you say A? Why have you gone for A? You can get me, sir. Yes, I can. We can get you. I can get you. Hello? Hello, please uh, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead, we can get you. Why have you opted for the A? The answer is A. Yes, can you explain your answer? Why have you, cho uh, why, why have you decided to choose the A? Hello? Okay, I think we can't communicate well with uh, Mr. Kapwembe. Anyone uh, else? Okay, so I agree with. Um, Hello. I agree. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think it's it's B because uh, uh, test charge okay. point charge is always positive. Eh? Huh? Yes. I think the so yeah. it's B. Okay. So the, the what we are trying to say is that the key word here is on. The charge that is act, the, the force that is acting on a positive test charge on a positive test charge. So it means that since the so I can't do. Pardon. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello? 
Hello? Yes, sir, you're yeah, audible. Okay, so I'm saying that the correct answer here, the correct answer here is uh, A, a reason uh, being that we are saying that the force that is to be acted on a test charge. Okay, so you know that since a test charge is positive, and when it is placed in an electric field due to uh, a positive charge, then it will be pushed. It will be pushed, so it will be uh, having a force on on it. So uh, uh, I, I think, uh, Madam Mwaba, uh, remember that we are not saying that the, the electric field due to a point charge, to a test charge, no, but we are saying that the electric field on a test charge. And you know that since a test charge is positively charged, it will have the, you know, a force that is acting on it, which is pushing it away. Okay, so the, the correct one is actually uh, A. Okay, so um, continue. So, yes, please. So the, the the question is talking about the that those those are not fields. Yeah, it's just referring to the, to the force, not the fields. Yes, you know the direction of the electric field. Remember from this point here. Uh, from this point here, uh, I had I think I had a, a point about the direction. So uh, this point here, have you seen it? Are we here? The direction of the field is the direction of the force acting on it. So it's one and the same thing. All right? Okay? Are we together, class? Are, are we together, class? Hello? Hello? Can you repeat what you say? You are breathing. Can you repeat what you say? You are breathing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello? Okay, please let us be responding because sometimes, you know, uh, the, the network might go and come. So if you just stay quiet and then you tell me that you repeat what you had said 30 minutes ago, then it will be difficult. So that's why I'm asking you from time to time so that if uh, we are together, I know the feedback, I get the feedback. So please uh, let us get in the habit of responding. Okay? All right. Sir. Okay. All right. So, so um, now let us calculate, as we are winding up, I think our session is, uh, is almost ending. So as we are winding up, let us find the formula. Our session is ending, well, we have to renew it. So let us find the formula for the electric field due to a point charge. The electric field due to a point charge. So in this diagram here, I have a point charge here that, we, that I'm calling a capital letter Q. This point charge that we are calling capital letter Q. And then um, now we want to find the, the electric field due to this uh, uh, charge here at a certain distance R at this particular point. So how do you do in order to find the electric field? How do you do in order to find the electric field? You have to first of all calculate the force. If you want, you find you find the force that would act at a that would act on a test charge that is placed at that, that particular point. So the force, as we had said, is going to be K times this charge. Have you seen that there are two charges here? So there is this capital letter Q, and then there is a small letter Q. Okay, over the distance. Have you seen the distance between there is R? and then we square it, okay? All right, so this, uh, I, I must say it is uh, Q naught. So in order for, for us to calculate the electric field, we say that the electric field will just be equal to the force per unit test charge uh, by our definition. So the force is given by this equation. So um, if you now divide this equation, you divide it by the test charge, it means that now what you have gotten is an electric field and not a force. Find that this one cancels and that one cancels. Okay, so it's simply, we simply uh, see that the electric field, the electric field just gets the expression K, Q over R squared. Okay, so the magnitude of the electric field is just K, remember K is that constant that we had talked about. And then Q is the charge that is producing that electric field. And then R is the distance of the point at which we want to calculate the electric field. 
Okay, so in the electric field is just K, Q over R squared. Q is the magnitude of, the, of that uh, charge that is producing that electric field, where R is the distance from that charge to the point of interest. Okay? All right, so now uh, with this explanation, I, I know that there could be questions. Uh, I'll answer the questions on the other side. Uh, um, I stop this session and then we meet on the other side because um, our time is up on this session. So um, uh, welcome back. So we are trying to, I, I think before we went for the break, are we together? Are you able to yes, get me? Yes, sir, we are together. Okay. We're about to get you. Okay, thank you. So uh, before we went for the break, we were saying that um, we wanted to find an expression for the electric field due to a point charge Q. So um, I was saying that, assume that you have a point charge Q, um, and then you want to find the, the electric field. You want to find the electric field due to this point charge at a given point, which is a distance um, of R from that particular point, okay? So you know that there is um, an electric field at all points as, as we have agreed. So you just uh, assume that you place a test charge at that point. Then what would, then what would be the, the Coulomb force that would be exerted on that test charge? Okay, so uh, the Coulomb force is given by this uh, equation. You know that um, the Coulomb force is just the product of the two charges. So you have the charge and the test charge, and then uh, over R squared, don't forget this, this is just nothing but K, which is one over four pi epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of this test. So uh, elect the electric field is just the force per unit test charge. So when you do this, you find that this uh, uh, charge that is here and that charge, they cancel out. So the electric field just uh, gives you K. Okay, it just gives you K and then uh, uh, Q over R squared. So in short, this is a very, very important concept that will be coming uh, to uh, time and again. So we are just saying that the electric field, this one is just equal to K. Remember K is just this constant here, over Q no, times Q over R squared, where R is the distance where you want to calculate the electric field. Okay, so just for the sake of emphasis, I think I'll do this now also on a, I'll, I'll do this on a, okay. Um, maybe let me pause for questions. Let me co pause for questions. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, so hello. Hello, yes, please. Yes, sir. I just want, want to find out about the constant, uh, the four pi. Mm -hmm. You said it's the, the same as k. Yes, so this constant that is here, this constant that is here is just what we call k. This constant that okay. is here is just what we call k. Okay, and then uh, um, it has a constant value. You can find it in any physics uh, book. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So now, um, before we leave this slide, this slide, I think I just want to say some to add something. So the direction of the electric field is outward. If the charge is positive, if this charge is positive, then the direction of the electric field will be outward. So what does it mean? If you place a positive test charge at any given point, then that test charge will be pushed pushed away, and that will be the direction of the electric field. Okay. Now, if this uh, charge, the, the point charge here is negative, it means that uh, if you place a positive test charge here, it will be attracted. So the electric field will be inwards. So uh, the electric field due to a positive point charge is outwards. The electric field due to a negative point charge is uh, inwards. And then the other point to take note is that uh, um, the electric field is constant on any spherical shell. So if you have a, 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 a point charge such as this one, okay? So you, you, if you look at this equation for the electric field, you see everything else is constant if, except for the error, just except for the error, okay? So at any points which, has, which have the same error, then the electric field will be the same. 
So you see that if you have um, a point charge at this point, it, it means that at all, if you imagine any um, sphere of radius R, it means that all the points on a sphere will be equidistant from that from this uh, charge, and therefore will have the same electric field. So uh, this dashed line that you can see, if you uh, uh, imagine, you visualize it as, as a sphere, it means that all the points on that sphere will have the same electric field. Okay? So uh, now, Sir, what? yes, please. On the previous slide, before you move, mm -hmm. I wanted to know why you are multiplying this part here times one over Q, why are you multiplying here? Why are we multiplying what and what? Are you Why are we multiplying? About, let me, uh, so this, that the other, let us, um, are you able to see my, my case, sir? Are you yes, able I am, sir. My pointer, are, are you talking about this, this step? No, this one here. The next one? At the bottom. At the bottom, okay, okay. At the diagram. Uh -huh. All right. Why, why is this part here being multiplied by that? Oh, I see, I see, I see, okay. Uh, here, I think I was trying to explain uh, something. I was saying that, remember this initially, and that I have now saved this so I can't even rub. Um, okay, so, um, um, Madam, this, uh, this uh, thing here, um, just one, one moment, I can't rub this. So I should do this. Okay, okay. So, Okay, so have you noticed that this thing here, this thing here is basically the, the force. Have you noticed that this is the force? Yes, sir. It is the force that is acting on this due to that. Have you noticed? Yes, sir. Okay, so we are saying that according to this uh, equation, the electric field is given by the force per unit charge. Okay, so basically in order for us to calculate the electric field, I've written this uh, force, so this is the force. I must divide it by the electric field. So that's why I multiplied by one over Q naught, so that I divide, I just show that I'm dividing by the, uh, the charge. Have you seen it? Yes, I, I, yes, I, so know, I now understand. You've, start, you've seen it. So, I, so this one cancels and that one cancels, so that what we just remain with is uh, this. Okay, so that right, becomes now. And then this arrow cap is just the direction. It just shows us the direction. Okay, so, thank you. Um, all right. So uh, the electric field, what about if you have um, a group of individual charges? If you don't only have one, one uh, charge, you have a number of charges eh? in the vicinity of a certain charge of interest. Remember that, I think we talked about that again when we were discussing Coulomb's uh, force. Okay, so here the principle of superposition. Remember uh, from Coulomb's, uh, from Coulomb's uh, law, if you have a lot of um, charges that are surrounding a given charge, then the force, the force on that particular charge is just a vector sum of the forces eh, due to each individual charge. So that is what is called the principle of superposition. I think we had discussed that. So the same thing, the, the principle of superposition also applies for electric field. So the electric field of the electric field uh, due to a number of charges distributed in space is basically just a vector sum of the individual electric fields. Okay, so let me uh, say that I have uh, this one is a Q1. And then this one is uh, Q2. Let me also talk about Q3. This one is Q3. And then this is the point of interest. Let me call it P. So I want to find the, the electric field D at point P due to charge one, charge two, and charge three. So what do I have to do? I just have to add 
you know the you know you can uh, find the distance of this you can call it r1 the distance from here to here you can call it r3 you can call it r3 the distance in a similar way the distance from there to there you can call it r2 and then you can calculate for instance you can say yeah uh, uh, the electric field due to one it will just be equal to uh, k, which is one over epsilon, one over four pi epsilon naught, and then times q1 over r1 squared. Are we together? In the direction of r1. In a similar way, you can calculate e2. You can also calculate e3, and then you add all of them in order for you to find the the total electric field due to these three charges at a given point. So that is what is called the principle of superposition. I think I would uh, want to pause for um, questions before we proceed. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, no questions. Uh, thank you. So we, uh, we proceed. Now, uh, let us uh, calculate. Okay, um, yes, uh, Mr. Chapa, I can see your hand. <laughs> You had a question. Uh, yes, sir. Can you get me? Uh, hello. Um, oh, Christine. Oh, good. I thought it was Christine. Madam Chapa, yes. Can yes, you get me? yes, yes, I can get you. Uh, my question is on um, the way you were supposed to add the, the total summation of the vectors from the original point from all three points. Uh -huh. Can you kind of Saying that again. Um, regarding regarding the, the formula at the top, like relating it to this formula that we are giving us on the slide. Okay, all right. Are you aware about the principle of superposition that we had learned last time? How did you find it? A superposition principle. What does it say? Yes, I am. What does it say? Yes, I am. So, so according to the superposition principle, the Coulomb force on a given charge due to a number of charges is this simply a vector sum of the forces exerted due to each individual charges. Are you okay with that? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, okay with that, right? So that one yes. is this point, this, this step, sorry. Um, here, this step, we are just talking about it, superposition principle, because the total force on a given charge is just a vector sum of all the forces acting due to uh, each individual charges. Now, if you look at this, this force is just the same as the, this force. Okay, this force is just the same as the, the force per unit test charge. This one is just the electric field by definition is force per unit test charge. Are we together? So each of these, this one can be written in yeah. like this. If you want to express it in terms of electric field, this one can be written like this. And then this one can also be written like this. So in short, here it comes to this point to say that, you know, um, the force per unit charge is just basically the electric field. So it means that the electric field also obeys the, the principle of superposition. Okay, so this summation, I'm sure you remember this summation from first year. Summation, it means that you are talking about adding all the forces. But when adding yeah. forces uh, in the electric field, you know electric field is a vector quantity. So when adding the vector quantity, you just don't add as if you're adding numbers. You must resolve the X component and the, and the Y component. You remember that, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's basically, I, I hope that uh, is clear now. Yes, I am, thank you. Okay. All right, so um, now we want to, to, as an example, to give an example of how to apply superposition. We want to give an example of how we can apply the principle of superposition as applied to the electric field. So the example that we are going to give is that of a dipole. Uh, from chemistry, I know that um, 
I'm very sure that you have learned what a dipole is from uh, chemistry, but maybe I'm going to I'm going to take you through. So, um, for instance, in a hydrogen, uh, in in a what? In a water molecule, you know, water is written as the H2O. It means that it has got two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, okay, which are bonded covalently. You remember that from, from your chemistry, right? So um, now covalent bonding, it involves the sharing, sharing of electrons, okay? Now um, it means that what this uh, oxygen, oxygen has got uh, six uh, electrons in the outermost uh, shell. Uh, while less hydrogen only has one electron. So uh, in order, you know, they, if they do uh, sharing of electrons, you find that they, um, uh, both the oxygen and the hydrogen will assume a stable configuration. Now, the sharing of these electrons, um, the electrons will tend to, to be pulled towards the side of, towards the side of oxygen, because you remember from chemistry that oxygen, has got a higher electronegativity, right? You remember these things, right? So the electrons will be pulled. It will, it will kind of pull uh, electrons towards its side more than the, uh, the, than, than, the, the ox, than the hydrogen. As a result, you find that here, you have a negative charge. A, a, a net negative charge builds on the side of the uh, oxygen, and then a net positive charge builds on the side of the hydrogen. Okay, so that situation where you have that situation where you have um, a situation where you have a negative charge and a positive charge of equal magnitude. Here you have a negative charge. Here you have a positive charge, and then they are separated by a distance that you can call D. That arrangement is what is called a dipole. Di comes from the word two. Po, it means the charge. So it has got two charges of equal uh, magnitude, but opposite signs that are separated by a finite distance, D. Okay? So that is basically what a dipole is. All right? So um, here, we now want to calculate the electric field at a given point along the axis of a dipole. Before we go any further, any questions just based on what we have explained on the dipole? Before we go further, any questions? So, sir. Yes. Sir. Uh -huh. yes uh, I just ask on the same uh, that I'm explaining. That is chemistry, right? Yes, yes. So, yes. in the direction, mm -hmm. the direction, vector direction, is it coming from the positive? Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. So a dipole, um, a dipole has got a quantity that is called the dipole moment. A dipole has got it. So you see uh, here, this is a, a dipole here. Um, uh, what is shown here is a dipole. So uh, because you have a negative charge and a positive charge here. So the dipole moment is defined as basically the product of the charge on the charge, see here we have Q, here we have minus Q, and the distance. So if the distance from here to here is a D, then the dipole moment will be given by Q, D. Are we together? Now, this dipole moment is a vector quantity. The direction, the magnitude of course is given by this. The direction is from the negative charge to the positive charge. The direction of the dipole moment is from the negative charge to the positive charge. Maybe uh, 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 if that's coming from chemistry, you can go and revise it a little bit on your chemistry. Okay, just in case you haven't gotten it um, uh, absolutely clear. Okay? okay. Uh, the uh, reason why I asked, mm -hmm. uh, I thought it's different from chemistry. Chemistry is coming from the positive to the negative, but in physics, uh, Coming from, uh, I'm surprised that it is coming from the negative. Um, in, chemi in chemistry, the, di the direction of the dipole moment is from a negative to positive. Are in you chemistry from, are you from positive to negative? Are you very, very sure about that? 
No, it's just a question. No, 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 no. There is nothing like chemistry. Chemistry and physics, these are complementary sciences. Both of them. So the type of moment is the same. I don't, I don't know if there is anyone who can uh, agree that uh, the dipole moment is, op is the other way around in chemistry. Is that true? Plus? No, sir. Chemistry. So just go and... No, the same principles apply. Yeah, just go and counter check with the chemistry. Sir. All right. So, sure, sir. So let me just now try to explain what, uh, what we are trying to do here. So uh, in this diagram here, maybe let me just activate my, my, my laser pointer so that we are able to see properly. So here, this is our dipole. This is the negative charge on the dipole. This is the positive charge on the dipole. Think of this as one system. Think of this as one system. This is what is called the, the dipole. Okay, so the center of the dipole here. So we are saying that the distance the, the, the separation distance of these charges is D. The separation distance of these charges is D. Okay, so uh, now we want to find the electric field due to this arrangement here, due to this dipole. You know, the dipole has got two charges. We want to find the electric field due to this dipole at a given point, P, along the axis. You know, this is the axis of the dipole. This is the axis of the dipole. If you draw a line, connecting the two. Now we want to find the electric field at a given point, okay? Now this point, we are saying that it is at a distance Z from the center of the dipole, okay? So in short, we want to find the electric field along the axis of the dipole at a distance Z from its axis. I repeat so that we all know what we are trying to do. We want to find the electric field at a point P along the axis of the dipole at a distance Z from its center. So in order for us to do that, we are going to use the principle of superposition. Now, what does superposition say? It, it says that it, um, the electric field at this point P is a vector sum of the electric field due to this positive charge and the electric field due to this negative charge. So in short, we are just going to find the electric field due to this positive charge and the electric field due to this negative charge and add them vectorally to find the net electric field. If we do that, it means that we have applied the superposition principle. Okay, uh, any question? We must understand that that's very important. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so just uh, give me um, just give me one minute, just one minute. Guys, if we don't freak up. Kukosa, kukosa. Today we are going to be a Okay, so um, here we are. We are we are back. So um, what I, I was just trying to do, I wanted us to, I wanted just what I just wanted to do was to have this diagram here to copy it, so that we, uh, I explain. I want to do um, us to do a calculation together. Okay, so uh, the thing is that we have this 
You see, um, first of all, let us um, call the electric field. Here we have a certain notation. We say that the, the electric field D, the electric field E, we, when we put a minus here, it means that we are talking about the electric field D, the electric field D, due to, are we together? Are we together, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. And then if we yes, say, sir, yes, sir. if we say E plus, E plus, then it will just be the electric field due to positive charge. Are we together? So it means that, you know, in short, what we are saying is that the total electric field, it will just be equal to the E minus, which is due to the negative charge, plus the E plus, which is due to the positive charge. Are we together there? So this is what is called superposition. Superposition. Uh, you, you, you pardon my handwriting. Of course, you know that I'm writing on the screen. Okay. Um, so now our job here will be to calculate. We know that this is the case. So our job here is to calculate what is E minus. Okay. E minus is just equal to uh, K, remember? And then times this, uh, the magnitude of this uh, Q minus, since we are just talking about the magnitude, we will not consider the, di the direction. So we'll just say times Q. And then over, what is the distance? I'm going to say R minus. The distance from, the distance from this charge. Okay, so just there, that, that this, um, at this point, are we together? So I'm saying that the electric field due to the minus charge is just equal to K, which is a constant, and then uh, Q, the magnitude of this, the magnitude of this, when we say magnitude, we are just, we are uh, not con concerned about the sign. Are we together? And now when we say R minus, this R minus that I've put is the distance from here up to the point where we want to calculate. Are we together? So what is this? What is R minus in this case? R minus in terms of Z. So you can see that uh, R minus Z is the distance from here up to here. And what is this distance from here up to there? It is just D over two because it is half of this, uh, the, the, the separation distance between the two charges. So R minus is just nothing but Z plus D over two. Are we together? So it means that this E minus will be given by K. I'll, I'll come to the sign later, just wait. So it will be K times Q and then over this R, which is Z plus D over two, and then everything squared. Are we together? And then in what direction is it? Do you think that this force this uh, electric field, is it pointed downwards or pointed uh, upwards? The electric field due to this, due to this minus uh, charge, is it pointed upwards or downwards? Remember, remember our axis is pointed upwards. Our Z axis is pointing upwards. It's pointed downwards. It's pointed downwards because you remember the direction of the electric field, we say that you imagine as if you have placed a positive test charge at that particular point. So if you put a, place, a positive test charge, so if you have a positive charge and the negative charge, there will be attraction. So at this particular point, the electric field will be pointing downwards in the direction of the attractive force. So you see that since the, the, the direction is downwards, the direction is downwards, we are going to put a negative here. Why negative? Because the up is positive, down is negative. In a similar way, if you consider E plus, E plus is basically the electric field due to this positive charge here. Then it will be the same. You just have to say K times Q. You see the magnitude is the same. The magnitude is the same. And then the only difference will now be in 
The only difference will be in the distance. So now here I'll say that R positive squared. Now what is R positive? Is the distance from the positive charge up to the point where I want to calculate the electric field. So this distance, as you can see, this R positive is just nothing but, you know, the distance from here to here is Z, but I have to remove this part. I have to remove this part. You can see that this part is nothing but D over two. So that Z plus is just the, uh, the, the, Z, the R plus is just nothing but Z minus D over two. I hope we are moving together. Okay, so you find that this E plus, the E plus will just be nothing but K times Q over Z minus D over two and everything squared. Okay, so this is just basically what, what you are doing. So you have this expression here. You also have this expression here. And then you have to now find these two things. You have now to put them in here so that you apply superposition in order for you to, in order for you to find the total electric field. Any questions before we proceed? Any questions? Okay, so no questions. So now let me go back since I've now done these, these, these talk. Um, okay, so I, I have this, um, maybe see if I can copy it. Can I copy this? Seems I can't because I'm in, uh, I'm in slideshow mode. Okay, so if you, if you go ahead, then you find that your electric field, I'm adding those two things, it will just be equal to K, uh, Q over um, Z plus D over two uh, squared. Now here I must have a minus. Remember there was that minus because it was pointed downwards. And then I must also have K times Q over Z minus D over two uh, squared. Okay, so uh, this is positive because it is pointing upwards. And then uh, this is negative because it is pointing downwards. Okay, so um, that, that's, uh, that's, that's just basically that. So now having done that, I will now, uh, this expression, remember this expression. If you are able to reach here, meaning that you have done much of the physics, now you just now need to do the algebraic mathematics the manipulations. So now that's where I'll take you to the slide itself. So where we have reached up to that particular point is just here. Because as you can see from this, um, as you can see from this, uh, okay, I think, uh, sorry, what we ha where we have reached, am I audible? Are you able to get me? Yes, sir, we're able to get you. Okay. So where we have reached in that calculation is somewhere here. Okay, uh, you see this is nothing but your K, since your K is common. In this case, your K, you can see it's found here, also found here. And then even your Q is actually common. So if you want, you can write this one as E is just equal to uh, K, uh, uh, Q. Okay, you factor it out. And then uh, what you now remain with is, this one is positive, so I, I'm, I'm going to take it there. So I have one over Z minus D over two, uh, squared, then minus one over Z plus uh, D over two, and then squared. Okay, so, um, and then at that particular point, maybe um, I'm now running out of, um, of time because we are just remaining with uh, two minutes before this session closes. Um, so at this particular point now, there's just a certain uh, a trick that we are going to apply, okay? There's just a certain uh, trick that we are going to apply because uh, you know that uh, from your uh, binomial, do you remember? Okay, before we apply binomial, let us do this. So the electric field can be written as a K times Q. And then what you have here, you can just write it as, since one over anything is just that anything to the power minus. So you have Z D over two to the power minus two minus 
z plus d over 2 to the power minus 2. That is Just check this one out. Are you happy with it? Yes, yes sir. Yep. So uh, we have just used both the simple laws of, um, what do you call them, uh, indices, eh? Yes. So you have this one, if you want to take it into the uh, enumerator, then you just have to change the power. To negative. Basically, that's what we have done. So when we come back from the break, we are now just going to apply a binomial theorem. I hope that you remember binom binomial theorem from your mathematics. Do you remember it? Binomial yeah. theorem. So at this, when we come back from the break, we are just now going to ap apply binomial theorem to this result and see how we can simplify it to get what we, what we want. So for now, let us leave it here. Then when we come back, we are going to simplify it. Okay, so we proceed um, where we had left. Okay, so um, I think we were at this particular point where we had uh, simplified our expression for the electric field, uh, trying to apply the principle of superposition. Are we together, class? Are you there? Yes, sir, we're together. We are here. Okay, thank you. So um, now right. after this, we said that we were, so let me now go to, I was trying, just trying to explain more. Now let us go to the to the to, to where we we are so we are at this particular point here okay so at this point it is where we now want to apply a binomial theorem now binomial theorem is basically an approximation where you are assuming that where you are assuming that um, this number here is very very small this number here is very very small okay so if this number is very very small what does it mean? It means that Z is very, very big. Now, what is Z? Remember, Z is the distance from the middle of the dipole to the point where you want to calculate the electric field. So, uh, by virtue of us applying binomial theorem, we are assuming that the result that we'll get will only be valid for a far field. What does it mean, far field? Okay, the point that is very, very far from the middle of the dipole. The point that is very, very far from the middle of the dipole. Now, if you remember very well uh, binomial theorem, uh, I, I will not start teaching binomial theorem here. I'll assume that uh, all of us are aware well. So um, if you apply binomial theorem, basically, then um, this, this guy here, it, just, it can just be written as like that. And this guy here can just be written as a, that. Just try to rem remind yourself about binomial theorem. Okay, so uh, now if you write uh, this uh, guy like this, then you can see that, um, you, you can see that these two terms, these two terms, eh? this one and that one can actually subtract, can cancel out. So you have this, this one here can cancel out with that one since there's a minus here, okay? Now this minus that is here, it, when you distribute it inside the bracket, you find that it will make a plus. So it means that what you have is the two, you see this two and the two on top can actually cancel out. So if you work out this, I'll give you a small, small exercise for that. If you work uh, that one out, you just find that easy, you just get this result. Okay, so and then since, since uh, from what, so, um, if you get this result here, let us take it uh, uh, to that place. So we are saying that if you evaluate this, it means that the electric field will just be given by K, remember, K times Q, and then times this entire thing that we have evaluated. And after evaluating it, we find that it's 2D over Z. 2D over Z, I hope we are together. Okay, so now you can, you, uh, if you work it out, you know that your, the value of k, the value of k is in nothing but 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So if you just push that one there, 
then definitely you are going to see that you come up with uh, this result. And then you also take care of the fact that, you know, the dipole moment, remember what we had said about the dipole moment, it's just the product of the charge and the separation distance. Okay, so, uh, uh, and so this is our final expression. This is our answer. So this is our answer. This is our answer for what? What was the question? Huh? Let us interact. What was the question? What trying to calculate the electric field of a dipole? Yes. So we are trying to. So some some of you have forgotten. Maybe the calculation has been long, so that you have even forgotten the you know, the question. Okay, so the question here is that we wanted to find the, the electric field along the axis of the dipole at a distance z from the center of the dipole. Okay, so it means that in this, uh, um, the electric field, you know that 2 pi epsilon naught, this is just a constant because epsilon naught is a constant that you can get from the book. And then uh, this p is just the, the product of the charge and the distance. Remember that, uh, no, and, and this uh, dipole distance, dipole distance D. So as long as you know the dipole distance D, you also know uh, Q, which is the charge, and you also know Z, then you can calculate the electric field. So in physics, uh, uh, this is what you call a symbolic answer. So you have this uh, symbolic answer. So in a typical question, you can be asked to derive this result. And then now someone can give you some numbers to say that what if the electric field was this much, and the distance was this much, then you, just, you can just gather that information there and plug it into that information, use your calculator and work it out. Okay? Any questions? At what point did you find it difficult? Sir? Uh, yes, please. For me, I didn't quite understand how we how we interpreted the, the diagram. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit, I didn't follow. I had some bad network. So I don't really know how we interpreted this part here. I don't know how we interpreted okay, this. So that question has come a little bit uh, late in the sense that um, all these calculations that we are doing were based on the diagram. So if you didn't understand the diagram, the chances that are that you have not understood the thing on what we have uh, done. So I, no, sir, I have you, understood. I wish that you had it. asked the, the question earlier. And uh, nevertheless, let me uh, try to explain. I think I was trying to use, uh, um, which diagram can I use? To just try to rub this uh, thing for me. Okay, thanks. Let me just try to zoom so that we are able to see the diagram uh, slightly better. Okay, so um, what we were saying is that, are you able to see the, 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 the case? Yes, I am. You're able to see the hand, eh? Okay, yes. so what I'm pointing here is actually the dipole itself. Okay? Okay. So we want to find the electric field due to this dipole at a distance at this point P. Okay, so now you see the, the axis of the dipole is, you know, when you join the, the, the two charges, with a straight line and then you extend it. So this point P is basically a point along the axis of the dipole. Okay, now how far from the center? From the center, you see this is the center of the, of the dipole. This is the center of the dipole. So from the center of the dipole, the distance to that point is Z. Are we together? So in short, yes, according to the superposition principle, in order for me to find the electric field at that point, due to this configuration of charge, I must just add the contribution to the electric field of this charge and the contribution of this charge. I put them together, then I find the net electric field. Are we together? Yes. Okay, so now uh, the distance, the distance from here, remember, I, I, I hope that now uh, you, and the distance from the positive charge to that particular point, we have denoted it as R plus. 
the distance from the negative charge to that particular point we have denoted as R minus. Okay? So the question is that we want to express yes. this R plus and R minus in terms of Z and D. Now, why are we interested in this R plus and R minus? Because in the expression for electric field, remember the electric field in the denominator, there's always the separation distance, the distance between the point where the charge yes. is located and the point of interest. So that's why, because this is this one, we yes. want to use it in that expression for the electric field. Okay, so now uh, you see that if the distance from here to here, this point is just midway between these two. So the distance from here to here is D over two, half of D. The distance from here to here is also half of D. Are we together? So what is the distance yes. from here up to there? Then that is a simple problem. The distance from here up to there is just D. The distance from here up to there minus d over two are we together yes so in short we are saying that r plus r plus is just equal to z minus d over two and in a similar way r minus will just be z and then we add this distance here which is d over two over two okay so um now with that that is why how we started have you seen this is what the calculations that we are doing so r minus, we said it was z plus d over 2, r plus was z minus. So all these were coming from the diagram. That's why I said that it was very, very good for you to ask this question at the beginning. Okay, so these are coming from there. And then you can see why do we want, why are we interested in that? Because this one, we want to find the electric field due to the negative charge, will just be given by this expression, where this now is just nothing but that. The electric field due to the positive charge, given by this expression, where this is just nothing but that. Then you place them in that equation. Okay, so try to have a careful look at it. All right. Okay. Better now, right? All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, now from this result, it's just some, one, one thing that I want to point out. There are several things that I want to point out. That is to say that the electric field, it is uh, proportional to, in, in this expression, the only thing that is changing is the, the Z, because you can find the electric field at any point. You know, the Z can be any point along this axis. So you, you see that as you increase the Z, then you reduce the electric field, which is making sense, because the Z is the distance from the center of the dipole to the point where you want to calculate the electric field. So as you move away from the electric field, you you are reducing the electric field. As you uh, move away from the dipole, you are reducing the electric field. And then, um, so the electric field is the proportional to one over z to the power three, z to the power three. And then the other point to take note of is that the electric field is always greater than zero, meaning that the electric field is equal or greater than zero. It's always positive as uh, because d is always positive you know d can never be negative because it is a distance so it means that the electric field is always a positive uh, as long as d is a positive and then this result is only valid for per field what does it mean it means that for z for very very big z why because we had used binomial theorem binomial theorem is a result that is only valid if this guy, as I had explained earlier, if this guy is a very, very small. Okay, so now, yes, please try to raise up your hand so that I, I think we know who is on the line. Okay, yes, Mr. Amusha. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Now, uh, I have a question. Uh, since it's a dipole, mm -hmm. now when we put a, a positive test charge there, what 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 will happen? Which fraction or repulsion? Uh, we had already assumed that we are putting a positive test a, a, a positive test charge, and that is why we are already assuming that we have put a positive test test charge here. That is why that's why you find that this e minus is it downward and the E plus is the upwards because we are assuming that the test charge that we have placed there is positive. And the test charge is always positive anyway. 
flow. Okay. Okay, so just try to go through and meditate on it a little bit more in your spare time. Just try to follow through. And then now uh, if you find the problem, then you can bring it up in the next uh, class. Okay, so um, now in the remaining time, we now um, want to go on to another concept of continuously charge distribution. Continuously charge distribution. Now, um, there is this term that I've, I've just I've, I've used for several times now, that we have used for several times, the point, the term point charge. What do you understand by it? Point charge, what do you understand by this term? I think we have been using it from time to time. Uh, yes, Mr. Musha. Uh, I think it's the, the source of the, the charge. Like it's the, it's the one we are saying it's ever positive. Yes, the point charge. Okay, now, now let, yes, us, uh, not, let us not confuse things here. Uh, test charge. You know, uh, there is also test charge. Yes, sir. Which one is always uh, positive between the two? What is the difference between a point charge and a test charge? Okay, I can say a, a point charge, it's the one which is the initial, the one, the one we're saying it's the, it's the, the charge, uh, Q, Q naught, and then what the, is the test naught? charge, the one that... Please, you know, if you just say that the Q naught, then will not uh, make progress if you say it's just the Q naught. What is yeah. That's the point charge. Yeah, yeah. And then the test charge? The, the test charge, it's, it's the one that we are saying that it, it can't change, it can't change the, 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 the field of the point charge. Yeah, the, po the point charge will ever have the, the electric field. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So okay, that's, that's, others, but that's what I understand about the point charge. Okay, others, what is the difference between a test charge and a point charge? Huh? A point charge is the reference charge, like the charge that we are referring to. Mm -hmm. The interest charge, if I can mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Then the yes, please. I'm getting you. And then the the test charge is the positive charge that it never affects the charge distribution. Now, that you, have... when you say a reference charge, what do you mean when you say a reference charge? Okay, as you are thinking, maybe can a we reference have... point, what, maybe if I can say. Let, let us, can we have other um, inputs, inputs from other people? What do you think? What is the difference, point charge and test charge? Huh? Hello? Um, hello? Y yes, please, just increase your volume a little bit. Explanations I've gotten so far. Mm -hmm. uh, a point charge could be either positive or negative. Then the yes. other thing is a point charge is fixed mm -hmm. and its magnitude is greater than a test charge. Its magnitude is greater than the test charge. Okay, so I think there are elements of truth in, uh, in, in what you have said. There are also some elements of truth in what others have said, although not entirely true. Uh, in some of you, what you have said is entirely untrue. Now, the, 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 what? the, correct, uh, um, the correct way to look at it is that point charge comes from the word point. What is a point? 
what is a point? If we just say point charge, what is a point? A point is something, for instance, this thing that is, that is moving, it's a point, are we together? Are we together? It is a point. Yes, we're together. Okay. Um, um, Okay, so um, when we talk about the po point charge, we are saying that the, the, the shape, the shape of that particular charge is not, or the charge is concentrated within a certain point. Are we together? Or the charge is yes. concentrated within a certain uh, point. Okay. Um, In short, we are saying that a point charge is just um, a configuration of charge where all the charge is concentrated within a, a very small region of space. Okay, I, I like giving this example when I'm talking about that. It seems that from the point, from the perspective, for instance, if, uh, if you have... Um, if, if, if you have uh, this object, it has got a certain shape. What is the shape of this thing that I've just drawn there? What is the shape of this thing that I've just drawn? Huh? Yeah. This is a square, right? So as you move away yes. from this square, if you move at a very uh, large distance from the square, are you going to recognize that that is a square? What are you going to think? You are just going to think it is just a point. Are we together? Yes. Are we together? You are just going yes. to think it is a point. So if this thing has charge, you are just going to consider it as a point charge because all the charge is concentrated within a very small region of space. So in short, what we are saying is that for a point charge, the size the, the, the dimensions of the, of the charge configurations are not important because the point, the, 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 that configuration is viewed from a distant object or perspective. The dimensions are insignificant. Now for a test charge, so this, as someone had already said, this point charge can either be positive, it can be negative as long as the, all the charge is concentrated in a point. Now, on the other hand, the test charge, the test charge is always the positive. Okay? A test charge is always positive and it's the one that we denote by Q0. And um, it is, a, it, it, it's ma the magnitude of the charge is very, very small such that it cannot affect it, the, distrib the charge distribution within its neighborhood. So don't confuse those two terms. And this is, this, uh, uh, is a very examinable question that I'm talking about here, okay? Uh, you can be asked in the exam or in the test to say that distinguish between a point charge and a test charge. The correct answer is that a point charge has dimensions that are negligible when viewed from a far away perspective. It means that it is just simply a, a charge is concentrated within a certain point in space, whereas it, a, a test charge is just a positive a charge that whose magnitude is very, very small, such that it cannot charge, uh, affect the charge distribution. Now, why am I now talking about the point charge and the test charge? The reason is that, um, as I had told you, when you look at, at if I look at this object, okay, if I'm at a very far place, I'm looking at it from a very far away uh, uh, place, I'll, I'll think that it is a positive, it is a point charge because the, all the charge is, con you know, is concentrated within a small regional space. But I, as I come closer to it, I'll be able to, sh to see its see, dimensions, okay? So, if I'm able to, if the dimensions are not negligible, then what we have is what is called a continuous charge distribution. A continuous charge distribution. Okay, so uh, continuous charge distribution, the dimensions are 
not negligible. The dimensions are important. You can actually see whether it is a, a length, whether it is a surface or a volume. But a point charge, the di dimensions are negligible because the charge is concentrated within a very, very small uh, point. Any questions? Any questions? So you must understand those three things that I've uh, uh, mentioned, a, a point charge, a test charge, and a continuous charge distribution. Sometimes a point charge is referred to as a discrete charge distribution. Uh, sometimes a point charge is referred to as discrete charge distribution. Now, when we come to continuous charge distribution, where I've said that the shape, the shape, the shape is important. Okay, so um, basically I want to introduce you to uh, three types of charge distribution, the three types of charge distribution, uh, namely, there are three types of charge distribution. Let me just go to, okay, so I'm just abbreviating charge distribution as CD. So the first one is what is called linear charge distribution. The first one is what is called linear charge distribution. This is uh, a continuous charge distribution where you have an object and all the charges are concentrated. If you have this line, you see all the charges are concentrated along the length. So you have charges on this point that are, so these ones that I'm drawing in red are charges. Okay, so you have charges. Now you see these charges are distributed in such a way that the length, the length of such a distribution is much larger than the other dimensions. Are we together? The length is much larger than all the other dimensions. That is what is called a linear charge distribution. Okay, so um, a linear charge distribution has got something that is called the, the linear charge density associated with it. Linear charge density, we denote it by a lambda. So that we say charge density is basically the length, the, 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 the charge, the charge per unit length. Okay, so if uh, from here to here, if the length is L, if the length from here to here is L, and then the total charge is Q. So uh, the charge per unit length, the charge per unit length is what is referred to as the, the linear charge density. So in short, we are saying that if you just have a very small, if you could have a very small uh, length that you can call DL, then what is the charge that is found within that small length? That is what is called the linear charge density. In a similar way, we have what is called the surface. We have the surface charge density. Now for the surface charge density, you imagine you have an area, you imagine you have an area on which you have some charges that are distributed on that area. You know, this uh, thing I've drawn it probably to look like a, a sheet of paper. So you have some charges that are distributed there. So it means that you have a surface charge density because the charges are distributed on the surface. Okay, so if you have this uh, uh, consideration, uh, there the charge density that you use is what is called the surface charge density. And then what do you think the, charge, the surface charge density is represented by sigma? Sigma is given by, what do you think it, it should, why, 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 what do you think would be the expression for, lead, for surface charge density? The charge would be squared maybe. The charge will be squared, all right. Uh, others, what do you think? Remember linear, charge, remember, linear charge density is the charge per unit length. 
surface charge density, it would be the what? Charge over area. The charge per unit area, because you know this this uh, this surface here has got an area, has got a surface area. So it has a surface area that you can call A. So uh, the the charge that you can find per unit area, the charge per unit area is what is called the, the surface charge density. In a similar way, you have what is called the volume charge density. The volume charge density, we usually denote it by uh, uh, the, the, the rho, which is, um, um, which is the omega. So sorry, it's, it's actually rho. Rho is equal to charge per unit volume. So you see you have a volume now, a volume uh, such as this one. Okay. So if you have the charge that is it within that volume, you can speak of the volume charge density as the charge per unit volume. Okay. Uh, so these three, they, they, they are the main uh, charge uh, continuous charge distribution that we are going to look at. So the difference between point charge and continuous charge is that um, for a point charge, we are just talking about the charge or the charge that is concentrated within a point. But for continuous charge distribution, you must know what is the, uh, di what are the dimensions of this? The dimensions are very important. So you must, uh, what is the, the configuration of the charge? Is it linear? Is it an area? Or is it a volume? Then you can decide there. You can decide the appropriate charge density to, you, to use. Now, um, uh, by the way, I must uh, introduce you to the other. Now, this expression can also be expressed in terms of, uh, no, I said that if you have a very small length here, you could still define the charge density as the small charge that is contained there, which you can call dq, over the small length. It will still be the same. So we have two expressions. The first expression, is uh, Q over L, where you are taking the total charge per unit you know, over the total length, or you could, talk, you can, you could imagine that this uh, distribution is made up of very, very small um, elements of length dL, and then the charge density is just basically the charge, the dQ per unit dL. It means that this dQ is the small amount of charge that is contained within this uh, uh, small length dL. In a similar way, this uh, sigma, which is the area uh, charge density or the surface charge density can be represented as the dQ over dA. In this case, dA is a very small area on the surface and this uh, can be represented as dQ over dV. Okay, so now if you see us using the d, d something over d something, it means that now we are going into ca calculus. Um, I just want to remind you, I hope that we have done a little bit of calculus in your, um, in, in your uh, past academic background. All right, so now what we are saying is that how can you calculate, how do you calculate it? I, I think this will now be the last slide that I'm looking at. When we explain this, maybe we are, uh, we are going to do an example in the next class that we'll have. So if you have uh, uh, a continuous charge distribution, how do you find an electric field? The electric field is due to a continuous charge distribution. So the, the answer to that question is that we are still going to use the superposition principle. Remember, in this point charge, this question about point charges here, we had the point uh, charges. And then when we wanted to find the electric field at a given point, we had to use the um, superposition principle um, applied to point charges. Now, when we come to continuous charge distribution, this is the process, this is the procedure that we follow. First of all, we must decide this uh, uh, charge distribution, is it a linear charge distribution? Is it a volume charge distribution? Or is it a surface charge distribution? After deciding that, we must uh, assume that that distribution is made up of very, very small, is made up of an infinite number of charges, each. 
Okay, so I'm saying that consider that this is a charge distribution. So you can assume that it is made up of a lot of volumes. It is made up of a lot of volumes. You can talk about, think of it made up of a lot of uh, volumes. Okay, that are making up this. So uh, each of these volumes eh, are having a charge of the Q. So if you add all these DQs, eh, then you are going to have the total charge eh, Q. All right. So now, remember, after you have determined whether it is, it is uh, remember from, uh, for instance, um, from uh, volume charge density, let us say for volume charge density, we say that rho was given by uh, DQ over DV. Are we together? So if you make dq subject of the formula, then you have dq will just be equal to rho times dv. So um, what you are going to do is that in this formula, remember this formula, this formula for the electric field. So where the, there is um, where the, there is dq here, we are going now to put this rho dv. Okay. Okay, so in, in short, um, I know that this is quite very difficult to explain. Uh, it's easier if you see an example, but I just want to outline eh, the procedure. The first thing is that eh, you find the expression for dq. These are the three these are the three steps that we are going to, to use in the in the example that we are going to do in the next class. The first thing is that you find the expression for dq. The next thing is that you represent the field contribution at P due to point charges. So you assume that this DQ is a point charge. So you find the expression for the electric field due to a point charge using what we have already uh, uh, discussed before. So you say DE, remember DE is just the, the contribution of this DQ to the total electric field. Okay, so DQ, DE will be given by this expression. DQ is just a charge. Remember, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is just nothing but the K. And then the next step is just to integrate. Now, uh, integrating is basically adding up. You are adding up the contribution. The contribution for each of these, because you remember I had already explained that you have um, assumed that this entire thing is made up of these small, small, small DQs. So now you add the electric field you are now using the superposition principle to add the electric field due to each of these DQs. All right. Okay, so we are going to see how it works out. Um, uh, we are going to see how it works out in the next uh, class when we meet on uh, Friday. For now, we are going to end uh, the class at this particular point. Um, maybe in this remaining um, uh, time, let us just um, very quickly discuss um, maybe some issues that we may be having in the course. If we are having any issues in the course or anything that you would want to say before we close. Anything? Any remarks? Okay, uh, all right. I have a question. Sir. Yes, please. Sir. Yes, yes, I can get you. <laughs> Hello, please, we are running out of time. I wanted to find out because we are having some challenges with our network. Sometimes Zoom will log us out of the meeting, then you have to come back in, then you have already explained certain things. Mm -hmm. So is it okay if as we're going through the course material during our spare time, we ask questions in the Telegram group. Will you be able to attend to them? Okay, to ask questions within the Telegram uh, 